Welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. And I am here with my wonderful guest co-host, Alex Eberhentes, who I'm always excited to see. Not that I don't love Tony Schiavone, but I think you bring a different kind of energy. Oh, well, thank you. I love Tony as well. Love working with you all the time and uh, love uh, conversing with you in Spanish, by the way. Congratulations on uh, on learning the language. Gracias, senor. <laughs> Very good. I've been, been trying to learn. And every time I go into the cafeteria at the uh, at work, I like sit down with the Spanish guys. I'm like, oh, I'm not that good yet. <laughs> I don't understand half of the shit they're saying. You'll anyway, get there. You'll get there. I'll get there. It's years, years off. But, but enough about me and Spanish languages and all these things. I want to talk about our special guest we have today. And I'm very, very excited to talk to the premier athlete, the hottest free agent signing in all late wrestling, Mr. <laughs> Tony Nice. How are you? What's Sarah? up? I'm great. How are you doing? I am. I'm doing awesome. So uh, one of the things that was really fantastic is like the, the timing that you kind of showed up on AEW was the same time that a lot of us were on the cruise. So uh, yeah. like we're we're like stealing internet from the boat and like refreshing Twitter to see what's going on on Dynamite. It's like, what the fuck? Tony Nese is here? This, <laughs> this is awesome. Like just so hey, it, so surprising. Just just <laughs> just as much as it was news to you, it was news to me about 30 minutes before that uh moment. So uh Ooh. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Do yeah, tell. I mean, Do a, tell. Absolutely. Yeah. It was a uh that was a crazy day. Um I was showing up. I was honestly just showing up to um to meet Tony, to talk to him, to say hi. Also to, you know, uh, we were locals in uh, Orlando. So, um, yeah, I was just there to kind of, to meet everyone, see if I can kind of talk with Tony and stuff. And I was standing outside of his office, just talking to a bunch of people, uh, Adam Cole and a couple others and stuff. And he walks out and, uh, he, he's like, Oh, Hey Tony, how you doing? I'm a big fan. Blah, blah, blah. Shook my hand. And literally like five minutes later, he's like, uh, do you want to sit out in the crowd today? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. Like I started, I actually kind of like took a step back and I was like, wait, you, you want me to like be, be a fan of like, what, what's going on here? You want me to like fill seats or something for you? <laughs> like I was, <laughs> I was super confused. And then he's like, no, 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 we're going to put you out there. We're going to, we're going to make a big deal out of it. Say like, you know, what's Tony Nese doing here and everything. I was like, okay, great. Like, all right. I just thought I was here to hang out and talk to everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then um, literally within uh, minutes after that, they also pulled me aside. They talked to me and we kind of talked out a, a deal and everything. And it was like a matter of that. Uh, and that was wow. literally 30 minutes before he's like, yeah, we're going to load you out there. And, uh, and that's it. You're just going to sit out there the whole show. I was like, Oh, okay. That's cool. So I just sat out there and I just, it was pretty funny. Like even, uh, you know, luckily nothing bad came out of this, but I don't know if you remember, uh, Lance Archer having an accident that, um, yes. And for some reason, the truck's <laughs> first intention was let's shoot to Tony Nese. <laughs> and oh, wow. I'm just like, yeah. And I see the red light in the camera and I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh no, like <laughs> uh -oh. I, I can, I have so many options here. I can look at the camera and make a, make a face, you know, and that might, you know, maybe that's a meme or something and everyone's going to oh, laugh at 100%. it. But, but also in my head, I'm like, I don't know how the severity of the situation yet. Mm -hmm. so the last right. thing i want to do is try to make something about me and then all of a sudden we find out later on that you know someone's really badly injured or whatever so literally i'm just like oh, i have no idea what to do right now in this moment mm -hmm. and i'm just like staring off into the distance like please make that red light go away <laughs> <laughs> so terrifying wow. magic yeah, yeah. Light tv <laughs> so follow-up yeah. question because uh i feel like every good worker learns this uh rule did you bring your gear to orlando absolutely of course <laughs> <laughs> never ever yeah absolutely Good Even the yeah i'm just visiting friends you just happen to have trunks yeah. and uh, boots in your uh, in your bag yep i was actually still um i was still on my 90 day uh one time mm. i don't know if you remember mm. i came i came to a jacksonville taping just to you come did. visit I as remember well seeing you there yeah yeah so yeah. so like i could i had no absolute chance to work i still brought my gear yeah Always you never bring know. your gear, no matter what. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if, if I would have got a phone call. Hey, Tony, uh, you're good to go. <laughs> you're allowed yeah. to do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> Anything, you never know. Happen to happen. Anything can happen in wrestling. That's it. Now, you, um, your first match was against Fuego in AEW, in AEW Dark. Is that right? Um, was that my first, first match? It. That might have been oh, the first man. one to air. Yeah, yeah it might have been the first to air. I'm trying to think... Uh, Man, yeah, I'm trying to think of which dark match. 
it's crazy, right? Like I can't even yeah. remember where it's we were last week. Time just flies, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's hard to remember that, but I know Fuego was obviously my first um, uh, AEW like contracted uh, match or whatever. And uh, honestly, that was man. He he's fantastic. He's phenomenal. He's so good. Absolutely. Yeah. So so good. And and uh, and he he's looking even better and better every time. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know if you've recently seen him in the locker room, man. He's he's getting bigger and he's everything. Jacked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's looking great, and he's gonna do a lot of big things. But yeah, I had so much fun working with him. That's awesome. And then you ended up having a TNT title match with Sammy Guevara yes. on your Rampage debut. I, uh, I don't think yes. that's the first time you guys had actually wrestled. No, we wrestled years ago in Texas for uh, a company called uh, Wrestle Circus. I believe, yes. Um, oh yeah, and, I remember uh, Wrestle Circus. Yeah, yeah, and he was like, he was like brand new, uh, becoming like kind of. Uh, a big thing in Texas. And then he was about to break out and everything. So, uh, so I got him at a very young kind of early start in his career. And uh, you know, he's one of those guys you get in there and you're like, all right, this guy gets it. This guy's going to be good. So, you know, just like that, we meshed well, we had a lot of fun. Uh, That's one thing I I kind of, I think that's one of my stronger sets is I mesh well with a lot of people I get in there with. Um, I kind of just, try my best to adapt to always their style and try to make it work within, you know, what I like to do as well. Um, And then, yeah, I think me and Sammy mesh really well. So I felt really confident going into the AEW match. Um, You know, we both, um, you know, fans of each other's work. So uh, it was very, uh, very easy to get in there and to kind of go and uh, work with each other. And I thought we, I thought, you know, as much as this was, you know, a big match for him, um, it was for me, it was huge. It was my showing. This is it. This is the show, you know, all the AEW fans, what I have to offer and what I can do. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah. And, and hats off to Sammy for gave, giving me uh, a great match. Oh, when did you find out that you were going to be wrestling Sammy for the TNT championship? Um, what was it about a week? I'd say about a week or two beforehand, we started filming, uh, some, some backstage vignettes and stuff like that. So, uh, so I knew it was leading into that and everything. So, I mean, to, to be able to like, to me, that was surreal. Like, okay, you just brought me in and and you're already ready to put me in a position like this. So that was a huge honor and it felt really good to, to get recognition like that. So, uh, but yeah, I believe it was about a week or so beforehand. So I want to go back to something you had said when you were first talking about your match with Sammy about being able to work with like a lot of different people and a lot of different styles. And I 100% agree. Every time I'm in the ring with you, I'm just like, man, this guy is so freaking good. He's like so malleable to whatever his opponent is, which is, you know, a sign of someone who's really awesome. Uh, One of my favorite matches that you've done is your match with Orange Cassidy that we got to work together. And I just remember like the Superman punch. You ended up doing this like inside (laughs) out bump to finish it out, which was fantastic. I'm curious if there's any sort of like memorable matches you have, because we'll get to the tag team stuff. But is there any sort of like singles matches in your AEW career so far that have really stuck out to you? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, The so the Orange Cassidy one definitely is. I think that's probably one of my favorite ones um, that I've had. Uh, And also the crazy thing about that is we've literally and we've been on tons of shows together on the independent level, but uh, we've never worked each other before never been in the same ring together and stuff. Mm. So yeah. So it was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, but he's one of those guys. You're just like, "Ah, that's going to be, you know, a walk in the park with him. He's amazing. Yeah. His character is just so, so over and everything. Um, that's definitely up there. Um, I also had a few like on dark, uh, I wrestled uh, cheeseburger in Philadelphia. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And I just remember, so like, that's what I love. My favorite thing in wrestling and what I like to do is like, I love, the reaction my opponent gets like i feel like job well done by me uh or whatever you know obviously and my opponent but um i just feel like you know my goal always at the end of every match is to have them cheering for the other guy that's why like dark matches for me are sometimes some of my favorite because you're, you're not necessarily in there with a guy who's already established you're in there with a local guy they might or might not know him so if i can some at some point in that match get the people chanting for that person when like i feel like i've done you know this is it we did it we did the job and uh with cheeseburger man it was electric the whole way through oh yeah Mm -hmm. he has Mm -hmm. so much charisma and everything he was so much fun to work with so appreciative too um but yeah like we we had a lot of fun and and so that one always that stands out to me as as one of my favorites as well so far in AEW. and then you got your obvious is uh you know my my match with strickland was great um Mm -hmm. we've and he's a guy that i've had uh 
uh, so many matches out there all over the wrestling world with and everything. And uh, I don't think we've ever had a bad match, which is great. Like we've always clicked, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know me and him. We're actually, uh, you know, road buddies for a while and independent level. Um, we, we would drive everywhere, you know, uh, all the time we would drive to Pittsburgh together and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we've gotten really close and we've gotten to be able to kind of understand each other. And, and, and we always have fun every time we get in the ring together. Well, it's interesting you mentioned Cheeseburger, obviously someone yeah. well-known for Ring of Honor. Well, so yep. is Josh Woods. Now, yeah. obviously you're teaming with Josh now. Did you know Josh prior to AEW? Um, I knew, didn't know him per, on the personal level, um, just knew of him and everything. So uh, so we kind of met each other as we were in the process of this kind of starting to work together and stuff. And uh, But... You know, the good thing is he, he's a he's a gym bro. He's just like me. So so we kind of we mesh well and and we're both you know, we make the we're both always making jokes and, and, and teasing each other and stuff like that. So, you know, making fun, fun of each other's bodies or whatever. And just kinda, <laughs> so uh, that's that's normally the body guy thing. You that's just tease each thing. other. You try to make the other guy feel smaller than you to kind of boost your confidence. So, so, so me and him always have fun with that, but uh, yeah, no, uh, me, him, Mark, we've clicked immediately and, and we've been having so much fun together and everything. So it's um, yeah. So I didn't know him well beforehand and um, you know, and you always go into it like, all right, I hope this guy is cool. I hope he's not, you know, like out there or whatever it is. And now uh, he ended up being a super cool dude and uh, we're having a lot of fun and we can't wait to to do a lot more. We, we keep coming up with all these crazy wacky ideas. So hopefully one reaches the surface soon. My, uh, my favorite thing to do if I want to piss off Billy Gunn is tell him he's looking small that day. Yeah, Ooh. absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. One of, the, <laughs> one of the worst things. One of the worst things you can go up to a guy that you know is trying to get bigger and you're like, oh, man, you've been cutting lately. You're looking, you're oh. looking smaller, leaner. <laughs> and then like they think you're comp like you. You go in looking like it's a compliment. But then they're like sitting there going, wait a minute. Am I looking smaller? What the hell? Am I looking smaller? What happened? <laughs> what happened? Are you sure? And then they'll ask you every week after, like, "Hey, what do you what do you think? Yep. Do I look do I look bigger? Like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's exactly. such a mean thing to do. And if I'm feeling totally. like a really vindictive bitch, I'm like, oh, this is how I get under somebody's <laughs> skin. Uh, yeah. So so teaming up with Josh Woods, and then you Mark Sterling comes in to to the mm. fold. How how did this whole thing start? How did Mark become sort of your? Uh, I yeah, think so, so he was representing you before Josh came in. Yeah, yeah. So me and Mark, uh, so. It's funny, actually, this uh, early on when I first started, um, it was probably like week two, week three in or whatever. Um, a lot of the guys from Long Island, you know, we kind of we all know each other. So we all hang out. So I'd always sit with Mark and all the other guys and stuff. And um, he was mentioning like, oh, man, I'd love to uh, I'd love to also manage a male wrestler, you know, because he was at the time he's working with Jade and everything. He's loving it, but he's very limited to what he can do because it is the women's division and stuff. So, um, so yeah, he was kind of like, oh man, I want to, I want to work with, uh, I want to work in the male division because I want to, I want to get beat up by everyone, you know, something yes. like, like he loves that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's what he he's loves good at. being the butt of jokes. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, I was, so we started talking about it and, and, uh, you know, I always thought that I would be presented better with a manager and everything as well. So I was like, let's, let's go, let's, let's talk to Tony and let's tell him. And he was actually a little bit like, Oh, I don't know. Like I'm doing a thing right now and I don't want to step on any, you know, like step on any eggshells, whatever it is. And I was like, I was like, listen, I said, I'll go talk to him. But if I go in there by myself, he's going to think that I'm just trying to create ideas for myself, whatever it is. I was like, we go in there together. He's going to see that we both agree on this. We both like it. We're passionate about it. So I grabbed him. I said, I'll do all the talk. And we went in there and that was it. We, we, we talked to Tony. He saw that we were both excited about it. And he's like, yeah, let's do this. And, uh, and then, so now we just keep, constantly pitching ideas of like hey how can we screw up this guy or you know this guy's run or how can we how can we pull the rug out from underneath from this person and then in the end give it right back to them and just have mark somehow get destroyed <laughs> that's yep. literally yeah. how we plan everything and uh, it's been so much fun uh yeah, adding mark has been such a great spark to to my career in AEW and everything so yeah that's yeah, kind of how it came is. about yeah, the, the chemistry is really great. You can definitely notice it with you guys. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to ask you, obviously, you're teaming up with Josh Woods now, but I didn't realize this. You had actually teamed up with Trent Beretta back on the Indies. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I first started wrestling, so we both came from the same school. It's called NYWC on Long Island. And uh, he was about a year in or so, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, and I just kind of started on the shows. And immediately, like, we were two guys that just – 
you know, we always stayed late together. We always, so we were always together in the ring working together. So like a lot of times when a promoter sees that they're like, all right, these guys would be good either working with each other or uh, either working against each other or working with each other. So right there was idea. Hey, two young baby faces. Let's, let's run with that. So they made us a tag team. Um, yeah, we did it for a while until the idiot had to go and get signed, you know, oh. um, <laughs> and had to, had to ruin a good thing on the Long Island <laughs> independence. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, he, he was my first of many tag team partners. I am a, I am, I like. It's funny. I look back and I'm like, wow, I've had way too many partners. Uh, and, and you start to think like, I'm, uh, there's a common denominator here of these tag teams breaking up every time. Mm. Might be me. Commitment issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I always I'm... get. Tur- I always seem to get turned on though. It's weird. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it's the positive side of things. Like it's your whole outlook of. I got to help build the other guys up and I got to make sure that they look good. I think that's why people are like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tag team with this guy and then immediately bust off. Like, no, fuck this guy. I'm leaving. Like, yeah, it's always, so, so, so in AEW, uh, like with guys I've teamed with, I guess Trent would be one. I also was uh, a tag team with buddy Murphy. Mm -hmm. Um, so now there's Josh. I'm trying to think, is there anyone else? So far. Um, yeah, t- tag team. Yeah, so far, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah. Aria Davari, obviously. Yep, we'll talk about uh, that one too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so I've had all these different partners and stuff like that, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and then also guys that I've worked with for so like Alex Reynolds. Um, it's it's uh, me and him have actually. He actually used to, uh, or he might still. He writes down all his matches, mm-hmm. um, which I wish I did. So he has the count and we're over. I think we're close to like 120 total matches against each other since the day wow. we started. Whoa. Uh, yeah, oh my so, gosh. Yeah. We, not, Cause we used to, yeah. we used to wrestle all the time on the independence. And then also like, we were the kind of get like we broke out together. So we would travel, talk to a promoter, get on the show together. We'd end up wrestling each other. So there was that. And then also NYWC um, would run tons of birthday shows. They would run like uh, a bunch of like, they would go to like sleepaway camps and we do like a tour of sleepaway camps in the summer. And every single night was Alex Reynolds, Tony Nese, or not Tony Nese at the time, but it was me and Alex Reynolds at, uh, you know, always in the main event or whatever. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. Like we would always just kind of, it was like fun doing like these little tours together. And always it was like our own version of live events. I love it. It's a Long Island yeah. crew coming together, staying together, yeah. and eventually yeah. ended there's, up There's a lot up of us. We're, we're spreading are, like wildfire. There are a lot of you. We're talking to Tony Nice, Alex and Aubrey here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, we got lots more to talk about, about the indies and about his time at WWE. And we're back. It's Aubrey and Alex right here at Unrestricted. And our very special guest is none other than the premier athlete, Tony Nice. Body guy, tag team specialist, all around great guy. Tony, great to have you here on Unrestricted. Thank you, Alex. So let's start talking about your fitness because I know you're yes. kind of the go-to guy when it comes to fitness. I anytime <laughs> I have a question about fitness, I'm like, can I talk to Mike? I gotta go talk to Tony. So, <laughs> so how yeah, did you um, first kind of get involved in fitness? Where did this kind of passion? Uh, so come it really. To be? It's a mix of two things. Uh, one, my, my oldest brother was always big into fitness. Uh, he, you know, subscribed to muscle fitness, all that stuff. So he was always going to the gym with his friends, working out and everything. And I obviously always looked up to him. Uh, I always looked up to both my brothers. And on top of that, um, joining a wrestling school and realizing, oh, man, I'm a tiny little squirt. I'm never and I'm not I'm not going to grow. <laughs> I'm not going to grow up that much anymore. So I need to, you know, look somewhat the part. Um, so that was just always my thing was just, you know, I, I, I'm lean. Uh, I always had like definition, but just not a lot of, I was just a skinny kid who, you know, you could see his muscles cause he was skinny. So for me, it was just like, I need to learn how to put on size. Um, so I just started, I got big into reading uh, a lot of uh, bodybuilding magazines. I read uh, Arnold's book, the, uh, encyclopedia bodybuilding. I read that thing at least four or five times now. Um, and I just, it just became my second passion, another part of my life. So I just, I would train every day. I ate, ate, ate every day, so much calories. I started learning more and more of what my body should be doing, um, which was just eat, 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 eat. Don't worry about what you're eating and just keep eating, you know, put on the size. So uh, that's kind of, it just kind of, and then it just snowballed into more and more passion. I just learned more and more about it to the point where, um, I, I got into, I was like, you know what? I, I've learned a lot about this. I know a lot. I should, 
I should go study and become a, a trainer myself. Um, so I did that. I, I, uh, you know, took classes and everything and got my certification and just started becoming a trainer. Um, and I, I worked, I worked as a trainer, my whole, pretty much most of my, uh, independent career until I, until I got signed and I had to, uh, I had to put that job aside for a while. So when someone's first getting into like fitness training, what's yep. one easy thing that you can do to help build that routine or change your way of thinking about fitness? Um, honestly, the hardest thing is everyone thinks they need to go with like a specific, like, this is how to do it. This is the plan. Look, that's, that's the easy part, just going and then lifting weight and everything. That's the easiest part. It, it's really a matter of just getting consistent and just going. Like I always tell, I tell my clients all the time and stuff like my success is not because of my knowledge. My success is because I never stopped. I just kept going. And I literally never, there was just, there's just no reason for me to ever stop. Obviously there's injuries here and there. Things are going to happen. You're going to have bad weeks. You're going to take weeks off. You're supposed to anyway. Mm -hmm. But, but other than that, like when it came to just constantly eating, always getting protein, always taking my supplements, uh, you know, my vitamins, all that stuff. Like I always stay on top of digestive enzymes, all that stuff. And I don't, I don't buy us, you know, I don't buy a supplement and go, okay, two weeks later, uh, this didn't work, you know? You know, like people buy creatine and they'll be like, ah, this didn't work. Let me buy a different creatine. And then the next week, they're like, ah, that didn't work. Like I, I'd stay, I just, you know, all right, I'm going to stick with this for eight weeks. Let's see how I feel with it, whatever it is. Right. Like it's just uh, it, patience, patience, patience is like one of the most important things. Hmm. So uh, that's the biggest advice. Be patient and just be consistent. And it doesn't matter how weak you're like, like if you're doing like a poor workout, compared to like what you should be doing, it doesn't matter. That poor workout is better than anything else you could have done if you didn't go to the gym that day. And what does a, a day look like for Tony Nice in terms of working out, in terms of, of, of diet? Uh, yeah, so um, for me now, so like my, my luckily at home, my, my routine is very, uh, uh, my day is very routine because I have children. So, mm. um, so I do, I, I get forced to wake up early. So, which is a good thing because I probably wouldn't have, um, but I wake up early. I, I eat my, I'll make my breakfast and make eggs for me and the kids and stuff. And then, uh, and then we'll get ready for school, take the kids to school, go straight to the gym with my wife. Excuse me. Um, uh, so we'll do, yeah, we'll do, you know, I usually spend not as long as people think I'll probably, I'm, I'm at the gym all day. I'm spending a good hour and a half, uh, you know, on a, on a fairly long day that's including cardio and everything so oh, yeah. like maybe maybe a leg day is going to be like two hours long for me but then that's pretty much it the rest of the day is just all about uh you know recovery it's all about just eating keeping the calories up and stuff like that um and uh and then throughout the day now like my day used to just kind of be hang out with the kids and 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 play um now that I've been uh, training, uh, I've been doing online training as well. Um, you know, a lot of my day now is taken up with doing stuff like that, writing workout plans and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, my, my routine's just, you know, it's simple. Just like anyone else's routine. Um, it gets a little uh, wishy-washy when it comes to being on the road. That's something where it's, you got to plan. Um, you know, I just plan ahead. I, I, okay, we're going to this town. Luckily I've done this a lot now where I kind of understand how each travel is going to be, but I'll, I'll plan out. I'll literally look at my plan. Okay. I'm flying to here. I have a two hour layover. Okay. I'll get my, I'll go to the lounge and I'll get my meals in here. And then I'll, and then I know I, I, it's a two hour flight to the next place. And when I get there, I'll stop somewhere, get some food or I'll get some Uber eats. Like, so I'm just always constantly planning ahead when it comes to travel. And then when I'm home, I already know my routine. Yeah. It's, it's it comes down to planning and eating a lot. And I don't think people fully understand yeah, that yeah. It's, like it, it's it's funny how a lot, yeah it's funny how a lot of my clients too will be like wow i didn't realize i'm supposed to be eating this much you know and, and i'm losing weight it's crazy but like yeah you know it's just you got to figure out that that right balance to get your metabolism working right it's almost like your body needs energy or something in order to yeah, build exactly, and transform right? itself it's, it's <laughs> yep. one of those like oh yeah duh no shit that makes total sense so let's move yep. on uh 2016 WWE 205 Live. Uh, I think you kind of alluded to this in the first segment. You say your favorite match was with Buddy Murphy. Uh, I think it was Barclays, like right after WrestleMania. So why why this match and why was it a favorite for yours for you? Um, so 
there's a couple reasons. Um, one obviously is we had way more time for this match. Um, so WrestleMania, you get, you go in with a million ideas, you go in with so much excitement. Um, but the reality hits, Hey, you guys got, you know, six minutes. Okay. Mm, you know, yep. and we're also, mm-hmm. and, and the funniest thing is that I think it was like a three hour pre-show with, with so much time and talking throughout the show. But for some reason, they had to show a picture in picture during our match. <laughs> and it's like, really, you couldn't show this ad during something or right, whatever. Fine. But uh, anyway, um, so that's just, you know, little things that make it go like, all right, this could have been it, this was an amazing moment. It was an amazing time, but it could have been, you know, we, we know the potential it could have been. So going into that, we being told like, hey, you guys are going to have, have your rematch and we're going to give you a lot of time for the 205 following. Like we were like, wow, this is OK. Let's do all the stuff we wanted to do. Let's have the match we wanted to have. Um, so that was one reason. And then the other one is um, that was a very, very, very long week for everybody, uh, for all the fans. They did access all week. They did, you know, they had WrestleMania. Actually, I think they had TakeOver, then Mania. Then you got Raw, you got SmackDown. And we're literally the last thing at at the end of everything. So you know? we're tired. And it's not, and it's not mm-hmm. even like, all right, we're going to save for last you know roman reigns versus so and so like no the last thing is 205 live of all this <laughs> right so if you guys don't have a hard enough time like, oh yeah our backs right. were against the wall all the time but right. it, it's fine though it was fun um so so anyway the cool thing about that match is if you listen to the crowd like you know we genuinely got them uh and we we were you were able to feel it throughout the match and by the end of the match we we got a standing ovation from people who've been watching wrestling all week long and they've seen the top you know echelon of things so we've like the pride after that match and everything it it felt so good even there's like a i have a photo actually that i kept uh where uh as i was walking to the back because they always do like a dark match after Mm -hmm. or whatever um so uh, as I was walking back, Kevin Owens was making his entrance or whatever. And he even came out, gave me a huge hug and kind of gave me my moment in front of the crowd and everything. Wow. So like, it's just that, that whole moment felt really, it felt like that capped off like WrestleMania for me. Like that yeah. was wrestle. That was my WrestleMania experience right there. So it was really cool. That is very cool. And, and another person that you've had great matches with, and you've also have great chemistry with, and then you ended up teaming with is Ari Davari. How yep. did this friendship this camaraderie kind of come together um i think it's just a matter of uh we were just kind of the we, we always made a joke we called ourselves the gatekeepers of uh 205 because uh <laughs> anytime someone else was brought into 205 it was like I, like i would literally my thing was as soon as i walked in i'd say hey tony niece nice to meet you can't wait to put you over you know <laughs> 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 so uh so yeah it was just we were the guys that came in and we were we would kind of test those guys out and and the cool thing is the company trusted us to the point where they would be like hey what do you think is he good is he you know so so that was a really cool thing but so we kind of just came up with this whole thing of, like we were the gatekeepers um and i and a lot of times it just happens organically in wrestling when you're always with someone when you're always palling around the company just kind of either either they see it or it just happens but you always end up kind of working together all the time uh we were always heels together so it just worked out um you know we were we were always kind of tagging because we were in the 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 zo train together we were Mm -hmm. um you know we were always doing matches with gulak where it was always like six mans uh you know trios matches but um it, we were just never an official tag team until later on in, in, in 205 and we just kind of made it more official and stuff. And we were just having fun. Um, you know, we, we, we caught, we considered ourselves the veterans of 205 and everything. And, and we were the ones that would, you know, take the show and carry it on our backs, even though we would always lose in the end, but that was just kind of our mm-hmm. mentality going into everything. Um, and, and honestly, Ari Davari is my, he's my absolute best friend in, in, in this business. He's my best friend now. Like I, he's the one guy that I literally talk to every day of the week and stuff like that. And we're always, we're always palling around. Um, so, uh, it's a tag team that I hope to revisit again one day in the future. It, I definitely cool. see it happening. And I love, <laughs> I love the, uh, happy to put you over. Like, uh, it's, it's so true <laughs> though. Right. Like people who aren't in wrestling don't understand like how important that actually is. Like that mindset is, is I think key to success. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, uh, like I said, I, I think I said this earlier, like I, I pride myself on, on getting the other guy a reaction. Um, oh, totally. and, and absolutely like that's, that's always been my goal. That's always been, you know, that's what I love. And I, and that's what I just feel I'm good at. So when you, when, and I'm, I've always been like that when I'm good at something, I get more and more passionate about it. Um, 
So that's just something I've always been, you know, I always push to do and try to do, you know, it's funny that my, my two least favorite chants in wrestling, like my two hate, I, I wouldn't say I hate them, but uh, is fight forever and oh, I, both mm. and, and both these guys. Oh, All right. Yeah. Right. And it's not a, it's mm. not a knock on anyone who gets that champ, but like, in my opinion, it's, well, now you don't care who wins, mm-hmm. you know? And I want, I want people to, to literally want me to look like I want, I love the hate that I get a lot of times from people, especially like Twitter and stuff like that. Like oh, they yeah. hate me, you know? <laughs> so when I, when I see that, like, it's like, it's job well done. I want people to, to absolutely despise my existence on the show because, you know, um, <laughs> A really good example that kind of got my, my me spinning in that was like uh, my I would always watch, you know, my, my wife's a casual fan. Right. She just watches because I have to watch. Uh, <laughs> so I say I have to watch because I watch. Yes. And uh, and every time Vicky Guerrero comes out with excuse me, <laughs> my my wife is always like. God, I cannot stand this lady. Someone please shut her up. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's it. That's the reaction you want. I want people to always say like, please, someone just put Tony Nese out of his misery, you know? And like, that's the reaction I always go for. (laughs) We are talking to Tony Nese on AEW Unrestricted and coming up, we got lots and lots of fan questions. This is AEW Unrestricted. Alex and Aubrey here talking to Tony Nese. We've been touching on WWE, on on friendships, on being a hated person on Twitter and just Mm -hmm. in in the ring and all of these things like super fascinating conversation. We've got fan questions. And our first one is from this guy, um, Mark Sterling Esquire. I've heard of that guy. uh, Who is your favorite lawyer slash ringside consultant of all time? Ooh, favorite lawyer. See, this is a tough tough one. one. (laughs) I'm (laughs) trying... I'm trying to think of another, uh, maybe, uh, no, he's not a lawyer. I was going to say Judge Jeff Jones, but <laughs> he's not a lawyer. No. He's, he's, he's in the legal lawyers. field. He's in the legal field. It's like yeah, halfway yeah, there. Yeah. Judge Jeff yeah. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, I guess Mason I'll, I'll put it out there. Mark is my favorite. <laughs> oh, fair. All right, Mark, you get your flowers. No, but honestly, <laughs> Honestly, Mark is great. He, um, he he's one of my favorites to watch now. I think he nails it every time with it with mm-hmm. his uh, you know mannerisms and everything, and the way he reacts to stuff and and um, and gets you to hate him and everything. Like uh, he actually is a is a big favorite of mine. So yes, Mark, you're really good at what you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, along those lines, this is a really great question to kind of segue in there. The Corvid <laughs> Queen wants to know who's funnier, Josh Woods uh, or Mark Sterling. Oh, that's tough because they're funny in their own way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like like Mark is unintentionally funny. Where Josh, like he's definitely trying to be funny, but he is funny. (laughs) He's very like quirky and he uh, he always says ridiculous. things. He's always trying. He always any idea we come up with, he takes it to the next level. He's that guy. So he's always going to keep taking that whatever, like because we will come up with funny ideas. That's just the wrestlers thing. Any idea you come Mm -hmm. up with, no matter how serious, somehow it snowballs into a funny idea. All the time. I don't know why we always go to the comedy direction, but uh, but Josh will always make it more and more ridiculous. So he's funny in that way where where Mark is just he's a he's you know, he's literally what you see. He's that uh, dorky dad, you know, so like some of the things he'll just say unintentionally is just is super funny. <laughs> so Absolutely. they're kind of they're kind of both funny in their own way. That's my hey. that's 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 my dad answer. <laughs> Your you know? dad answer. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. I love well you done. both the same. The, well oh, done. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Can't show favoritism. Even yeah. both of them are great. Yeah, no, we're Happy still too early. We're still too early in our run that uh, you know I can't piss anyone off. <laughs> there you go. Not yet. Good it's point. inevitable yeah. based on your history. Yeah, yeah you have a history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have a question from the young prize fighter. Who is your dream wrestler or to wrestle in a match, and who would you Ooh. like in AEW to compete with? Okay, so both of those are going to be the same answer. It's going to be Chris Jericho. Oh, um, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. And, and then and yeah. like, it's, uh, he, I don't even think I, I've never even said this to Jericho, but he's my absolute like favorite. He was my legend. He was my hero growing up and everything. Um, I, it specifically takes me back to, um, one vivid memory is when Jericho won the, uh, the championship from triple H to open raw. And then mm-hmm. later that night, and then later that Amazing. night to lose it, uh, back to him was literally the amount of emotions I went through in that, in that 
you know, what was it? Two hours at that time or whatever, whatever it is. Hours, yeah. yeah. The emotions I went through, I remember going crazy, calling my friend up like, Oh my God, did you see what happened? Like I was so excited. And then as the show went on, you start to realize things aren't going so right. And then he loses it at the end. And I literally, I couldn't, even, I, the next day at school, no one could talk to me. I was so upset. <laughs> that's <laughs> and like, awesome. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that's just a memory in my head of like, man, like that's wrestling to me, those mm-hmm. emotions, whether you're angry, whether you're, whether you're excited, like, and so like that brought out the most emotions in me than anything else I've ever watched. And from that moment, I was like, I'm a ride or die with Jericho. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to invest all my money in, in Jericho things and I'm going to invest in his career. And uh, so he was always kind of a hero to me. Um, and then reading his books as well, were actually like I, when mm. I started training is when he came out with his first book and, um, and that was like a huge, you know, I'd read that all the time. I'd always spend an hour or so reading before I'd drive out to wrestling. And it just kind of got my mindset of like, hell yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a freaking awesome career myself and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I've never told him this, uh, honestly, um, I haven't had too many long conversations with him because I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm actually that super fan. Like anytime I'm around, if he says something to me, I'm just like that awkward. I give like a response that doesn't even make sense type of like, thing. Hey Chris, <laughs> hey Chris, uh, nice yeah. to see you. And then like, how quickly can you walk away type thing? All, all the time, yeah. all the time. I'm like, Oh, I, uh, I should spark a conversation with him about this. And then I'll stand there and I'm like, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. <laughs> just walk away. Oh, catering was great today. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, uh, your but, oh, that's bike. so cool. <laughs> yeah. But to be able to work with him would be an absolute like that would be top of the bucket list in wrestling type thing. So very cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, National Scissoring Day wants to ask a question <laughs> about okay. what the secret is to your eight abs. Is that eight? Oh, uh, the it's secret to my eight 60. abs. Yeah, it, 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 is it, feels, only eight. it is only eight. It feels infinite. <laughs> How many abs you have? <laughs> good, good. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. But, uh, um, so what was the question again? I'm sorry. I got flustered. <laughs> what, what's the secret to them? Is there a secret? Oh, the secret. Uh, the secret, honestly, uh, I always tell people is um, my lower body training. So, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm big on leg day. I, that's always been my most important day. And again, I think I said it before, like anything I'm good at, I, I usually get super dedicated with that. And, um, when I was younger, like I was the, because I played ice hockey most of my life, I, um, I had really strong legs. So I'd always be the impressive one at the gym with my friends. I can always squat more than everyone, even though my squats were probably atrocious at the time. Like I still could lift more weight. So, uh, so I just kept, I would always focus, focus more on lower body. And, uh, and that, you know, I, I feel like I have very good, strong legs because of that. And I believe that a good, strong, lower foundation will always make the upper body better. Mm. So, uh, mm. so, so I always tell people, build your foundation and everything else will come with it. Um, and, you know, as well as I, I make, I learned how to, you know, engage my core properly during deadlifts and squats and stuff. And then, so like, that's, what's given my core its greatest strength. Um, but I think training, having, you know, good amount of muscle so that my metabolism is healthy and everything, that's what's really keeping me lean. So, um, you know, all the sit-ups in the world or whatever, ain't going to do it for you. It's gotta be everything else. You gotta, you know, think about your larger muscle groups. That's going to, you know, generate more energy for your metabolism. Like those are the ones you want to focus on. We get some free fitness advice from Tony. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll send, I'll send you and the listeners a bill later. Okay. (laughs) There we go. I'll forward it to We'll send some before and after pictures too. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, it's absolutely true, right? Like abs are made in the kitchen and abs aren't made for doing thousands of crunches. It's everything else that, that builds it. So yeah, fantastic advice. Uh, Question from Brandon on Twitter. What are the foods you have the hardest time saying no to? Okay. So that's, that's, uh, it's tough because I eat everything. Um, yeah. I don't know if you see, but now I'm blocking it behind me, but I have a, I have a Ben and Jerry's with my logo Ooh. made in the painting. Oh uh, that's one of my, that's one of my favorites. I eat that almost every night. Uh, you know, nice pint of Ben and Jerry's or whatever, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, um, for me, so, so that stuff is actually important to me. I need to eat that stuff. I feel like for calories, but, uh, fried foods is actually my mm. biggest one. Um, cause I don't think fried foods are really good for anyone, you know, deep fried, um, and, but it is something that's very hard to say no to at times. 
you know, especially mm-hmm. when you're out, when you're out and you need something quick or, uh, you know, you're out at a bar, you get wings or whatever, like no matter what, those wings are going to be fried, you know, nine times out of 10. Um, so things like that are usually things when I eat it, I feel kind of a little regretful at the end and stuff like that. Uh, and it is hard to say no, but if there was something I had to say no to, it would be fried food. Have you ever seen the flavor graveyard at the Ben and Jerry's factory? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I've never been. To, I've never been to the factory, but I've seen the graveyard, and yeah, I've seen. I've Alex, seen like I, all those gravestones. Where is Alex, that graveyard? So it's at like the Ben and Jerry's factory, wherever they're at, and like that's in Massachusetts, I think. Massachusetts, no, they, yeah, it's the northeast. Yeah, it's like that. Okay. But you walk into this graveyard, and there's literal like tombstones of all of the flavors that they used to make that they don't make anymore. Wow. And like little eulogies on them. It's absolutely great. And as soon as Tony said like yeah. Ben and Jerry's, I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Follow up yeah. question from uh, Ref Aubrey on Twitter. What is your favorite flavor of Ben and Jerry's? Oh, uh, what is my favorite? I don't feel like you just came up with this question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, favorite flavor. So uh, I'd say my favorite flavor is either the Tonight Dough. Yes. Jimmy. Yeah. The Ooh. Tonight Dough is amazing. Um, I have a couple ones. My my go tos would be either tonight though or the everything but the I don't know if you've had that one yeah. uh, that one's amazing and then uh, coffee toffee mm. yeah that one that one's really good so so those are those are probably my top ones but there's I mean honestly there's so many that are amazing uh, <laughs> I can go on I can go on all day about uh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream there's Next, so many any anytime we're up there we I got to do a tour uh, whatever it's either Massachusetts or New Hampshire something up there though. One Some of the New England area, yeah. Well, we're going to Boston soon, so hopefully that's uh, Ooh, yeah, something we're going to do. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, Tony, thank you for joining us today. This was incredibly insightful. It was awesome learning about you and how big of an asshole you are, uh, <laughs> intentional asshole you are, but mm-hmm. then also just all of the, the discipline and whatnot you have in your life, which is, to me, like thank very you. inspiring. And uh, yeah, thank you sure. so much for being here today. Uh, thank Thanks, you so much for having me, yeah. You can listen to this podcast, new episodes every Thursday on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can watch Elevation on Mondays, Dark on Tuesdays, Dynamite on Wednesdays, and Rampage on Fridays. You can see this guy teaming with Josh Woods and listening to Mark Sterling ramble off. This is, yeah. this is Aubrey Edwards and Alex <laughs> Abrahentes. Thank you for listening to AEW Unrestricted.